My name is Naima Lowe. Um, I'm an artist based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, we're here in my back, the backyard of my apartment um, because my studio inside there is just like the second tiny bedroom in there and it just, we wouldn't be able to fit. My project uh, for Art365 has changed a lot. The original theme and idea was um, basically an outgrowth of an ongoing conversation that I've been having with my father, who's a jazz musician, Bill Lowe, about what black music is. And that was what we were gonna explore with this. And it was really exciting and we're gonna do great. And then COVID came and that was not possible because I'm not gonna put my 75 year old father on an airplane um, to come here and do small music, intimate music workshops with, with people um, throughout the state. So, and you know, my studio was shut down, my, you know, I was in the process of leaving the fellowship that I was in, you know, the world was really intense and I had to really kind of rethink my approach to what I was doing, not just with this project, but with like my life. Um, and part of what started was me sort of figuring out, I have to keep up a practice. I have to kind of develop a real sort of daily habit of creating in ways that in some ways are more similar to what my dad does as a musician, which is just like practice, practice, practice every day. And I really decided to commit to my drawing practice um, in ways that I hadn't in, in the past. And so that looked like making these sort of small um, paintings and drawings um, like these that were never more than like, you know, 11 by 17 at the biggest. And then it turned out that this thing that I was doing to keep my mind together was creating something that was really resonating with people. And um, meanwhile, I was also thinking, I gotta make some money because I'm about to leave this fellowship that I was in that was my main source of income. And decided actually in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder, um, his murderer on trial as we speak right now, that I really wanted to create work that was both coming out of my the thinking that I was having freedom to do because of my drawing practice, but also all of that really was responsive to the beautiful abolitionist work just for black freedom that was happening around. And all this time I'm thinking about all these things that I was learning with my father about collaboration and about collective liberation through the work that we do together, but also alone in that case, because I, COVID meant I had to be really isolated. So it was this weird place to be. Um, by luck, I started to think about working with a um, local print shop here in Tulsa, Flash Rug Print Studios, love them forever. Um, and thinking, how could I take some of the ideas of making these beautiful small things that I can really get into people's hand in a moment when the world me is like, just exists in a screen, right? And kind of express some of my ideas about, um, you know, defunding the police and abolition and racism and, and all the things that I'm sort of thinking about while having to kind of like be cut off. Um, and I just sort of realized that um, working with print could be a really, really fantastic way to do it. So this is not the first, but one of the first prints that I did. Um, it's just a repeat of this phrase, rebellion is love, is transformation is love, is rebellion, in repeated over and over in all this pink, um, which is sort of the, a color theme that I work with a lot. It was really humbling to not have a studio anymore, where in the past I've made work that has a lot of scale and a lot of, or is, you know, very social and video oriented and stuff and things that I love, but in order to do them and present them, I need all this support from these big institutions in order to do it, which is great until I th you don't have it anymore. <laughs> um, but so then suddenly the idea of things that are small, like prints or like, you know, postcards of the work that you make, or, you know, I have some of my paintings now like printed on like a bottle or things like that. Like those are things that on some level feel I don't know, we're, I think, trained to think of them as almost like tacky or something like that. But in reality, for people who are invested in creativity, a lot of the ways that we engage with it is in our day-to-day -day lives, not just, I mean, I go to museums and stuff and I do that things, but that's partly because it's my job, not necessarily because, you know, it's like, 
but I also consume it in this other way and, and want those things in my life and in my home along with the ways that I can engage it in those bigger scales. But I'm thinking about kind of setting up a way where you can see, just see them, but then also um, setting up sort of a pop-up shop in the um, gallery. But I'm thinking about having it be like a barter pop-up shop. I want people to not just come and buy things, but to think about artist economies and think about our, all of our relationships to our creativity and our ability to survive and what that means. And so um, I have, you know, again, I'm still sort of thinking it through, but, it's something I do a lot with this this business. I sell, I sell pretty well, um, but I also give a lot of gifts and I do a lot of bartering. You know, like I've bartered legal services, I've bartered um, with other artists a lot to, to get this stuff accomplished. Um, I give, you know, pieces of my work away for fundraisers and things like that. And that's such a part of, you know, it's like we all have to survive capitalism, but then we also, have to survive with our humanities intact and so you have to kind of make up other systems as well so th those are kind of the elements it's sort of going to be like different objects for sale and for display and me trying to kind of get myself and people engaging with the work to not just I mean people can just buy people can just go on my website and buy stuff and I hope they do but also think and engage with just the f the ways that um we talk about and assign value to all kinds of things um, because value is so arbitrary and strange. And so, um, but also, as I like to say frequently, my landlady does not take uh, poetry or Marxist analysis for currency. So I gotta make money, right? So it's this like constant kind of tension around stuff. And also this is Jake, everyone should know him.